We have made it, my friends. The Sephora savings event for spring 2024 is now upon us, and these are all of my recommendations for the sale. If you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia, and I absolutely love luxury beauty. I review hundreds of luxury and prestige beauty products on this channel every single year. I spend my money so that you don't have to, so that when these events come along, I'm here to tell you what is the best of the best, what should you be picking up. This video is gonna be a mixture of new products that have launched since the past sale, and also some luxury favorites, some luxury classics that I've been using for years. So if you guys want to hang out with me and hear about the best of the best at Sephora, then keep watching. Real quick, friends, before we get into it, because I bet this is going to be kind of a lengthy video, I have so many recommendations for you guys. I just want to mention that in the description box down below, I'll put all the details for this event and the code that you're going to need to get your 10 15 or 20% off in the event. It's going to be opening up this Friday, April 5th for Rouge members. So you guys are going to get to shop first. And I will also link down below all the recommendations in this video, along with my favorite shades that I'm going to be discussing. I do use affiliate links. So if you want to support my channel, if you're going to be shopping this sale, clicking on one of my links before you check out is a really great way to do so. Really big thanks to those of you who have been supporting me so far. I really, really appreciate it. And the last thing that's going to be in the description box is my Sephora favorites playlist. I have other videos like this that I've made for previous events. So if you guys want to hear more recommendations, it's all going to be in that playlist. I also am going to be linking my product ranking playlist. So if you want to see my bronzer ranking, my cream blush ranking, if you want to see my recent updated lipstick ranking, all of that is going to be in that playlist as well. So lots of good recommendations for you. And with that, friends, let's get into my favorite products at Sephora. I'm going to be going through all these products category by category, friends. So timestamps will be down below. And the first category is one of my absolute favorites, and that is complexion. And the first product that I'm recommending is probably one of my favorites in this entire video, one of my favorite new releases, and that is the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. I love this stuff. I personally like to use this as a primer, but you also can mix this glowy liquid goodness into your foundations as well. I have a full review with lots of comparisons if you want to check that out, but I will tell you guys, this is probably one of the best hydrating glowy primers that I have ever tried. It's so beautiful on the skin. A lot of you guys know I have dry skin, so I'm always looking for a little bit of extra, you know, extra moisture, extra juiciness, and I definitely get it from this product. It also comes in a really good shade range. So, so beautiful. I like the fact that it kind of blurs imperfections, blurs a lot of my redness, and I definitely think it is one of the best in its category at Sephora. Once again, you can see all of those comparisons in my review. Next up in the complexion category, friends, we have foundations, and I have a couple here to recommend just kind of depending on your preferences but my top pick this time around is going to be the Prada Beauty Foundation and okay? not only because I love the formula but also Prada Beauty is pretty expensive okay and I really don't see it going on sale so now is the time to try it if you've been thinking about it this foundation gives me the most airbrushed looking skin it is a little bit more high coverage but you can sheer it out I love to mix it with the Dior primer that I just mentioned to give a little bit, you know, more moisturization, more of like that springtime glow. It lasts really long. You know, if you're looking for something that is a little bit more full coverage going into the summer months, if you know, you get a little bit sweaty throughout the day, this stuff is going to last. It has a soft matte finish, but it doesn't dry my skin out. There's a beautiful shade range. It is such a gorgeous foundation. I've really enjoyed using it. Everything from Prada Beauty, by the way, is really, really good and great to pick up in this event. If you're looking for an option that's a little bit less matte and full coverage, I highly recommend the House Labs Foundation. This is a bestseller at Sephora and it is for a reason. This has become an everyday staple for me. I love this foundation. I don't even talk about House Labs that much on this channel, but the foundation is top notch, also has a really good shade range. It's going to be a little bit more moisturizing than the Prada Beauty one, slightly less full coverage, but you also get a beautiful, beautiful radiant finish. If you're looking for something maybe a little bit more like dewy and glowy for spring, if that is kind of your vibe, I also really recommend the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. And I forgot how good that foundation is, especially if you have dry skin, if you want something really, really hydrating. And like I said, you want more of like a dewy glow. 
I think that foundation is so, so beautiful. And finally, friends, you guys know my holy grail for skin tints is the Danessa Myers Yummy Skin Tint. There have been several foundations that I have tried over the past couple of months that I haven't really liked or have dried out my skin. And then I go back to the Yummy Skin Tint and I remember like how good a base product can be. It's so good, guys. I've talked about it so much on this channel, so I won't go on and on, but I really like that it gives, you know, a decent amount of coverage for a skin tint. It is super moisturizing. My skin never dries out throughout the day because that's the thing. It's not just about hydrating your skin when you first put it on. It's about staying hydrated, not becoming a crusty crab by the end of my workday. That is what I need. I love that it gives coverage. I love that it's moisturizing, but not so dewy that I like can't layer powder products over top without getting having it be like a sticky mess. It's such a good skin tint. I absolutely love it. So if you haven't tried that yet, I definitely think you should get it. And yes, I do like it more than every other skin tint that I've ever tried. I have three recommendations for concealers, friends, and surprise, surprise, the first one is another Dior Complexion product. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This might be my favorite concealer ever. It's tough because you guys know I love Clay de Peau. There's so many good ones on the market, but I think at Sephora, I think this one is definitely my favorite. I know some people were a little bit irritated because this was reformulated, but I don't know, guys. I think it worked in my favor because this works out so well on my skin. This is the concealer that I always recommend to my friends and family if they're looking for something really good, especially if they don't know that much about makeup. I'm like, just get the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. It is beautiful, it is glowy. It does have a little bit more of like a matte texture, which honestly, I kind of prefer because sometimes when you go in with the very serum-y concealers, it's hard to like layer other products on top. Or if you have a pimple, it's like not enough coverage. I like that it has more of a matte texture, but it does not dry out my under eyes because this part of my face, let me tell you, it gets really dried out and I don't wanna emphasize any of the little fine lines that are popping up right around here, it never dries them out. The other recommendation that I have, which this is great if you really wanna target the darkness underneath your eyes, it is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer. I wear shade 2.5, but they have some really light shades if you really wanna brighten things up, friends. This concealer has mica in it, so it is a little bit sparkly. I don't think I would necessarily recommend putting this on a blemish, but for the under eyes, this is probably the most brightening concealer that you can find at Sephora. Charlotte Tilbury is a little bit pricey. So once again, it's really good to save a couple of bucks on that. And then the last recommendation that I have for you is the Makeup by Mario Concealer. This one is probably like the most matte, the most full coverage. It is a self-setting concealer. So it kind of dries down to more of a matte finish. I don't know how this doesn't dry out my eyes, guys, but for whatever reason, it works. I think this one is probably the best if you want to cover up blemishes as well because it has some blurring properties but it's not going to be like borderline sparkly like the Charlotte Tilbury one. It's just really great. I was very much pleasantly surprised by it because you guys know I didn't really like the Makeup by Mario foundation, but the concealer, the concealer is a winner in my book. And my last recommendation in the complexion category, friends, is my favorite powder. I love the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. You guys see me use these all the time on my channel. I find that a lot of powders, they just get cakey on my skin. I don't know, my skin just gets dried out, but I never get that with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. I like both the singles, particularly like the little mini ones you can buy. I love the shade Dim Light, but I also really like the trios that you can get with the three shades because then you have a lighter shade for kind of like maybe brightening under the eyes and then you have the other two shades for all over the face. I feel like a lot of you guys know about this product, but it really is one of those now kind of like boring old favorites. But hey, what can I say? It absolutely works. These make you look like you have a filter over your face. Next up, friends, we are getting into cheek products. We're gonna do bronzers, blushes, and highlighters. Starting off, with powder bronzers. I have three recommendations for you guys. I feel like these are the best, the best in terms of formula, but also in terms of color, right? Because when you're going for a bronzer, sometimes the trickiest part is just finding a color that works for your skin tone. The first one that I wanna recommend, guys, is the one that I'm wearing on my face today. This is the Tom Ford Soleil Bronzer, specifically in the shade 
Terra. So many times on this channel, I'm reviewing new bronzers and you guys always ask me, you know, what's a good bronzer if I want something that isn't too orange, isn't too warm, a little bit more neutral. This is the bronzer that is the most neutral in my collection. In fact, this has become a staple for my product comparisons here on the channel. The color is beautiful, but also I really like the packaging. The formula is super silky and blendable. It's one of those really high priced Tom Ford products that I will say, guys, I do think is absolutely worth it. The other one that I really like is the Gucci bronzer. And specifically, if you have maybe cooler or like pinker undertones in your skin, I think you're really gonna like the shade Fair. I don't really have any other bronzers in my collection that have this really soft kind of pinky undertone to them. So many people love this shade for a reason, guys. The formula, just like the Tom Ford, is very silky, but I feel like the Gucci bronzers have kind of like a buttery texture to them as well. So if you have drier skin, if you want to kind of smooth everything out, they're so, so beautiful. And the packaging, the packaging on the Gucci bronzers cannot be beat. The last powder bronzer recommendation that I have for you all are the NARS Laguna Talc Free Bronzers. Now, I love these because not only are they very finely milled, but they also have a really good shade range. I want to say that they have like eight shades and they also have mini sizes, guys. So if you don't want to spend too much or you just want to try it out, get a mini size. That's what I did. The shade Laguna 00, the lightest one, that's another really, really good bronzer if you have a fair skin tone and you're kind of, once again, nervous about something that's too dark or too yellow. I have a bronzer ranking, by the way, guys, with a lot of like swatch comparisons. You can check that out in my ranking playlist, but the NARS bronzers are also mm, chef's kiss so good. Now, I also have three recommendations for cream products, and these are gonna be great for both bronzing, but also for contouring. And many of you know, okay, my absolute favorite is the Westman Atelier face trace stick in the shade Biscuit. This is such a beautiful neutral to cool tone shade to put in the hollows of the cheeks to sculpt the face. I really love the packaging, not only because it's luxe, but because it comes in a stick format. So it's just so easy and quick. It's really hard to switch to other products because the formula is just so, so beautiful, guys, and it's very, very convenient. I know it's very expensive, but hey, this is the time to buy Westman Atelier when you're gonna get a little bit of a discount because I really don't see this brand give out discounts really all that often. It's such a gorgeous product. A lot of people love it. It's popular for a reason, so that's why I'm mentioning it here. If you want something that is a little bit more on the affordable side, because I totally get it, Westman Atelier is very expensive. I would check out the bronzer sticks from Rare Beauty. If you check out the shade Bright Side, that one is really close to the Westman Atelier. I wouldn't say it's as good, but it's real close, guys, okay? It's a beautiful neutral shade. And then she has some other ones in the lineup that are warmer, if you prefer more of like that toasty look to the face. The last recommendation that I have in the cream or liquid bronzer category are the new Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzers. The shade Swept is a beautiful, cool tone that I use as a contour. You guys see me using it here in the demo today. For this look, these just blend themselves. They're called the Cloud Paints for a reason because they go onto the cheeks like a cloud. Obviously, they have the blush versions too, which let's not even get into that. I have like every single shade in those, but I was really impressed with the bronzer versions as well. And they have just like the Rare Beauty, they have kind of like the warmer tone ones that I also use on the tops of my cheeks to kind of warm up the face. Next, we are getting into blushes, a very popular category over the past couple of years. And some of my favorite ones from Sephora are hands down the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. I know everybody knows about these. Most people know that they are so good, but I'm talking to the people who haven't tried these blushes because I was late to the game. I didn't try these until like spring of last year, guys. And then I realized why so many people hype these up because they are so beautiful. The price point is really good. You can get even more of a discount in this event. The packaging is really cute. They're pigmented. You have both the dewy and the matte finishes. I like both of them, but I think I like the dewy one just a little bit more than the matte. If you're looking for something slightly less pigmented, maybe a little bit more user-friendly, I would go for the Glossier Cloud Paints. Those are really amazing, as I just mentioned. But I really like the fact that the Rare Beauty ones have the two finishes. 
pieces and just so many beautiful shades to choose from. My favorite shade is the shade Grateful, which is this beautiful romantic bright red, which looks like it's gonna be kind of clownish on the cheeks, but trust me guys, it's not because you can sheer these out. They look just so juicy and beautiful on the cheeks. This gives you a gorgeous romantic flush. A lot of you guys are always surprised when I demo this at how beautiful it is. Don't sleep on this shade. And if you want something a little bit more neutral, the two shades that I would recommend are Hope, which is kind of like a, more like a true pink. And then we also have the shade Virtue, which is more of like a peachy nude. And then you guys also know that Rare Beauty recently released a powder version of these blushes. I just reviewed every single shade, so check out that review if you wanna see swatches of all of them. These are very, very glowy. These are like borderline highlighters, but I do really like them. You guys know I love a glowy blush, and the one that I have on my cheeks today is called Hope. This one's also called Hope. There's a liquid one and there's a powder one. They're both called Hope. This is a beautiful, kind of like rosy nude with a little bit of a shift. They give so much glow to the cheek. I feel like this is gonna be a super hot product this season because they were just released. I have no doubt that they will sell out. I think that every single shade is going to sell out. So this might be one of the first things that you wanna to add to your cart when you're shopping the event. If you're looking for something maybe a little bit more luxurious, I will also recommend to you guys the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks Cream Blushes. These are just as beautiful, just as luxe as the Face Trace Contour Stick that I mentioned in the previous section. I really like the shade Doo Doo, which I think is gorgeous for spring. It's this really beautiful romantic pink, but they also have some really nice, you know, kind of nudes. My last cream blush recommendation are the Vanessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Flush. It has a very long name. The Yummy Skin Blushes from Danessa Myricks. These are gonna be beautiful if you want something that lasts all day. These are kind of like, they're a cream, but they go onto the face and they set down just like a matte powder blush would. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. They also have that upsolite ingredient in there that's going to absorb oil. So these are the blushes that I would recommend if you are gonna be like out and about, maybe it's hot outside, maybe it's summertime, you need something that's gonna last all day and sort of mattify the skin. They're so beautiful, and I really love that Danessa really went for it with the beautiful bright shade range. I really like the shades Jubilee and Prima Donna. They're gorgeous if I'm going for more of like a blush heavy look. I usually go for those, they're so beautiful. And then for powder blushes, I picked out two. It was hard, okay? It's hard to narrow down all of these because there's a lot of good products at Sephora. But my first powder blush recommendation are the Hourglass blushes. Just like the setting powder, the blushes are equally as beautiful, natural, luminous. I just love the texture of these blushes. I have a lot of the palettes that have many different shades of the blushes, but the ones that come in the singles, I think my two favorites are the shades at night, which is a gorgeous kind of plum. It looks darker than it's gonna be. It's very, very natural on the cheeks. And then there's also a cult favorite here, which is called Mood Exposure. This one, gorgeous natural blush for every day. It gives kind of like a mauvey tone to the cheeks. I feel like these are beautiful for spring because you get that kind of like ethereal glow. And then of course, guys, many of you guys know I'm a huge fan of the Gucci powder blushes. I love the cute little packaging. I love the shades. These are gonna be less glowy than the Hourglass. They are a demi-matte finish. So they're not fully matte. They're not fully glowy. They're kind of a little bit in the middle. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Perfect Goldilocks blush. A lot of people ask me, are they worth it? I think that they're worth it. I love the formula. They're super silky. My favorite shades are definitely the rosy beige. And then I also recommend the shade True Pink for spring. So, so gorgeous. This is the time to save on Gucci Beauty. And I think that the blushes and the bronzer, those are definitely my favorites from Gucci Beauty. And lastly, in the cheek category, friends, we have highlighters. And the first couple that I'm gonna recommend to you are surprise, surprise, all from Dior Beauty. I just absolutely love Dior, okay? And they have some really good highlighters at Sephora. The first recommendation that I have, which is kind of like the new hot product for you guys to check out, are the Dior Forever Glow Maximizers. I was so excited when I saw these show up at Sephora. They come in a few different shades. These are the new 
liquid highlighters from Dior. You could like mix them into other products, but primarily, you know, like they're liquid highlighters. I've done a bunch of different comparisons of these with other products. They're going to be more subtle than the Charlotte Tilbury. They're going to be less glittery than the ones from Rare Beauty. They're going to be more pigmented, more noticeable than the Lisa Eldridge ones, guys. And I love that these give such a beautiful, plump, moisturized look to the skin without being greasy, slimy, without kind of slipping and sliding. I feel like they have pretty good longevity for a liquid highlighter. Check out my review, guys, if you want to see a couple of the shades applied to my face. I'm wearing the pink shade to the tops of my cheekbones today. That one's really good as a highlighter, but the rosy shade or the bronzy shade, for example, those are good if you want it to be more of like a glowy bronzer or a glowy blush. My favorite shade is the bronze, by the way, which I know I've mentioned several times. Also from Dior, you have their powder highlighters. So first up, you have the Dior Forever Couture Luminizers. I have a review of these as well in every single shade. I recommend if you're going for something very standard, go for the Golden Glow. That is the one that looks the most natural, but I know that the Pink Glow is also very popular as well. If you want more of like a pinky tone type of highlight, these are a beautiful, standard luxury highlighter. I also highly recommend the Dior Backstage highlighting palette. Now you get four different shades in one, so it's a little bit more of like a better value. If you feel like you're going to use all four of these, then I think it really makes sense. This is a baked formula, so it looks so smooth on the cheeks. You can also use these as eyeshadow. I have loved this thing to death. Like I probably need to get a new one because mine is falling apart, but they're really, really good highlighters. They were out of stock for a very long time as well. I don't know what was up with that. I was a little bit concerned, but they're back in stock, guys, okay? So snag them during this event. And the last two highlighters that I will recommend to you, friends, are number one, the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wands. I feel like everybody knows what these are, but I still really like them, okay? I know there's so many dupes out there. I really still feel like the original are the best. I really like the Peach Gasm ones. These are gonna be glowier, more pigmented than the ones from Dior, just so you guys know. And I love them for that. I love them for that. I go for the Dior if I want more of like that fresh face, more natural type of look but I go for the Charlotte Tilbury when I really want that glow, when I wanna be super duper radiant and I feel like they have a little bit more of like a range of colors, so there's that as well. The other one that I recommend to you, I feel like I'm recommending a lot of Westman Atelier products in this video, but I just wanna give a shout out to the Westman Atelier highlighters. These are called the Super Loaded Tinted Cream Highlighters. Very unique formula and the color Peau de Peche is definitely a cult favorite. I love to go for that in the spring and summertime if I'm doing kind of like a peachy, bronzy type of look. It just kind of melts on top of my bronzer. And once again, the packaging from Westman Atelier, like it feels like a paperweight. It feels like a little luxury. And this is the time to get a little bit of a deal on it. We are now moving into eyeshadow palettes and my top pick for this event this time around guys is going to be the Dior Backstage Smoky Essentials palette. I was very excited when I saw this pop up on Sephora. This is limited edition, so it's not gonna stick around forever guys and I do think that this is one of the best neutral eyeshadow palettes that Dior has made. I did a full review on it, so if you wanna see a demo of this palette, you can check that out on my channel. It is a beautiful mixture of kind of neutral to cool tones. I know I have a lot of friends out there that really love their cool tones. So this is gonna be a palette that you wanna pay attention to. I think they have maybe two other colorways that are available in Sephora right now, but this one is limited edition. They don't stick around for long. And once they're gone, I really don't see them coming back in stock. Now, if you want something a little bit more warmer in tone, I would check out the NARS Afterglow Irresistible Palette. I'm always very kind of like side eye about NARS because they launch a lot of the same thing, but I did give them a chance. I did try out and review this palette here on my channel. And I gotta be honest, I thought that it was good. I think if you like warm tones and some of those more like purpley shades mixed in, you're really gonna like this. The formula is gorgeous. There's like three different finishes in this palette. You get a lot of shades for your money. The packaging is good. I cannot deny it. it's a really beautiful palette. You just have to really be into 
warm shades. And then the last limited edition eyeshadow palette that I think you guys should check out is the Tom Ford Emerald Dusk Palette. I just posted a review of this palette this week, so you can check that out to see if it's gonna be right for you. This is a part of the Soleil collection from Tom Ford, which as I'm filming this video just popped up on the Sephora website, so yay. You guys get to save a little bit of money on it. These products from Tom Ford are very expensive, but if you can find a good eyeshadow quad, I really do think it is worth it. I love my Tom Ford eyeshadow palettes and the Emerald Dusk palette I did really like. I like the beautiful iridescent neutrals and then you have that gorgeous multi-dimensional emerald. Not gonna be for everybody, but definitely my colors. The whole Soleil collection in general looks really beautiful this year, very beachy. But aside from the limited edition palettes, I also wanna recommend to you guys some classic favorites, starting off with the Tom Ford quads. I think the three best ones that they have on the site right now are number one, Nude Dip, which is gonna be neutral to cool tone in the wet dry formula. Number two, we have Hazy Sensuality, also in the wet dry formula, but that's gonna be more like pinky tones. That one is my mom's favorite. She wears it all the time. And then number three, guys, De La Creme. That's going to be in the classic formula if you want something really basic, silky, soft, a little bit more subtle, not as shiny. I think you're really going to like that one as a good classic neutral palette. If you want to hear more of my favorite Tom Ford palettes, I do have a Tom Ford palette ranking video where I rank 23 of the palettes and you guys can kind of see, you know, which ones I like and why and all the swatches and everything. So you can check that out in my ranking playlist. And of course, in this video, I also have to recommend the YSL Mini Couture Clutch Palettes. We all know that I'm completely obsessed with these. Are they basic? Yes, in terms of color story, but I think in terms of formula, they are really special. They are kind of buttery in texture. They have a very high oil content, so they look beautifully smooth on the lids. They're kind of like the Gucci bronzer, except in eyeshadow, if that makes any sense, guys. I think that the one to get is definitely Stora Dolls. That is the one that is the most popular. I would not be surprised if that sold out in the first day or two of the sale, to be honest with you, even though these have been around for a little bit. I also highly recommend that you check out the Guerlain eyeshadow palettes, just like the Tom Ford, just like the YSL. All of these are luxury eyeshadow palettes and they do have a pretty high price tag. I feel like it is worth it, especially if you're gonna be getting the 15 to 20% off. I really like the permanent collection eyeshadow shadow palettes from Guerlain. I know they're coming out with all of these limited edition ones, but I really, really liked the baked formula that is in the permanent collection. And my favorite quad is Majestic Rose. I do have a review of this if you guys want to check it out. I just love the gorgeous romantic kind of pink and plummy tones that you get with this palette. I will be doing another demonstration with this palette very, very soon. So kind of watch out for that. I also recommend pretty much any Natasha Denona midi palette. I love Natasha Denona and that midi size is really the perfect one that is for me. The one that I think I would recommend to the most folks out there if you don't already own it is the I Need a Nude palette. It is so beautiful for every day. If you want something that is a really, really good value, because what is that palette? Like $65? And then you get 10, 15, or 20% off and you get all of those shades that are perfect for every day. That's a pretty good value, I would say. I really like the Glam palette as well. I will be honest with you guys, you know, people always ask me like, what are your favorite Natasha Denona palettes. My favorite ones are the colorful ones. Like I like the Love palette. I like the Sunrise palette, the Yucca palette. I like the ones that are a little bit more colorful and fun. But if you're looking for something that's more, I guess, every day, the Glam palette and the I Need a Nude are definitely amazing. And the quality is so, so good. And then my last recommendation in the eyeshadow palette category is actually kind of a random one. I don't know if I've mentioned this one before. It is the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is from Busy Art. Okay, you guys know I I love Viseart and there's only one Viseart palette on the Sephora website. It's been on there for a while. I don't know what's up with this guys, but they only have one palette, okay? It is the Paris Love Letter palette. Do you guys know that I love this palette? Okay, pun intended. I will be honest with you guys. I don't use like the green and the lavender shade. I don't think I've ever touched them. I don't use them. I solely use this palette 
for the beautiful neutral shades. This is the palette that I often will pull if I want like a pretty fresh neutral look. There is just something about the gorgeous shimmers that are in this palette. I feel like I'm hyping it up here. It really is so good, okay? The Viseart formula is beautiful. And even though there are other palettes from Viseart where I kind of like the complete color story a little bit more, this is the one that I go to if I just like have no idea what I look to create and I want something really, really beautiful, fresh, and ultra, ultra neutral. It's so good. I love it. Next up, friends, we have liners, mascara, and brows. Three of the most boring categories, but let me tell you, they are also three of the most important categories because when you find a good mascara, when you find a good brow pencil, that becomes your ride or die, okay? You repurchase that stuff over and over and over again. So I'm going to share with you guys my holy grails right here. I have some really good ones. In terms of eyeliners, specifically pencil liners, okay? That's kind of what I'm into at the moment. My three favorites are number one, the Dior Show On Stage Crayons. They came out last year. They are so good. They are easy to apply. They don't tug at the skin. And once they set down, they last all day. I love them. They come with a little smudgy at the other end, which is very, very handy. I also, believe it or not, friends, still really like the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliners. I think that the quality in the formula is just as good as the Dior, except the Urban Decay have really, really unique colors. Sure, they have like some crazy colors, but they also have some really beautiful, like chic wearable ones that no other brand creates. And then lastly, for eyeliners, guys, I also really like the Lancome waterproof ones. Specifically, you need to check out the shades Parisian Nights and Sen Sparkles. If you like a little touch of blue in like a really chic and wearable way, I highly recommend you check those out. If you missed out on like the Chanel Rivage palette or the Chanel eyeliner, anything like that, go and take a look at those eyeliners because they kind of emulate that look a lot. They're very, very beautiful. For lip liners, there can only be two. Okay, guys, the Charlotte Tilbury and the Pat McGrath. I honestly feel like the formula is very, very similar. I am wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk liner right now. I also really like Iconic Nude from Pat McGrath. I love the shade Buff. Like, it's all the same shade, okay? They're all very similar. They're all neutrals. These are the things that I'm always like trying to fish out of my handbags because I'm always using them and then I'm losing them. I should probably buy some doubles and triples. But yes, those are my favorite lip liners. I really like lip liners that are creamy and blendable, but then once they set, just like the eyeliners, they literally last all day. For my mascara favorites, I have three holy grails at Sephora that I always go back to. I like all of them equally, but they have some subtle differences. The first one that I love is the Cali Ray Make Waves Mascara. I like the kind of thin and tapered wand. It really helps me get every single little lash. If you are wondering about my mascara preferences, guys, I like a lot of length and I like a lot of longevity. I also like volume as well, something that is buildable. I don't want to have to be like sitting there all day building up my mascara, but I would say that longevity and length are really what I'm looking for first and foremost. And I definitely get that from the Cali Ray mascara. It also comes off really easily with warm water. My eyes are very sensitive. I really don't want to be like rubbing that area to get off mascara. I don't like waterproof mascara. So the Cali Ray really, really works for me. And actually that is also my mom's favorite as well. The other favorite that I have is the Tower 28 mascara. This has gone viral and for good reason. I feel like it's just as good as the Cali Ray, but for this one, the brush is a little bit curved. So if you want a little bit more curved, I think this one would be good for you. It gives such nice separation of the lashes. I also think it picks up a little bit more product when it comes out of the tube. So if you're someone that likes more of like a one swipe situation, I would recommend going for the Tower 28. The Tower 28 also finally comes in the brown shade at Sephora. I've been waiting so long for the brown shade, which is called Drift, to come to Sephora. So now is the time to snag it. I'm definitely getting another one because I'm almost finished the one that they they sent me when they first launched that shade. And the last one is the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. I think that this one is probably the best if you want a little bit more volume, but you also, once again, want a lot of longevity. So those are my three holy grails. And then for brows, the one product that really stands out for me that I would recommend you check out is the Kosas Brow Pop. This is a brow pencil. I like ones that have the little swivel because I don't have time to be sharpening that when 
from getting ready. It also has the little spoolie at the other end. I really think that the formula is a good balance between like not too waxy, not too creamy, not too powdery. It's really a good Goldilocks type of pencil. And they also have a new like nano version, I believe at Sephora, which is an even smaller tip. So depending on what you like, if you like to kind of draw those little hair strokes, or if you're like me, you just kind of do it real quick and brush it out. You can kind of choose which one works best for you. We are moving on to the lip category, friends, and I want to kick things off with my favorite lip balm. This was out of stock for like the longest time. I got a little bit concerned, but we can all take a deep breath, okay? Because it is back. It is the Dior Lip Sugar Scrub. I know it's expensive for a lip balm, but I love this stuff. I've been using it for years. It is so luxurious and moisturizing. It gives you the same moisture that you get from the Dior lip glows, which are also really nice. But the lip sugar scrub has these little sugar granules inside of it. So it scrubs your lips as you use it. And friends, it also tastes delicious. I love the sweet little taste that I get from using this. It's really good to prep your lips as you're starting your makeup. If you're going to go in with a lip product afterwards or you know, just to wear it on its own, that looks good as well. And then also I like to take it with me on the go because if I am wearing a lipstick that day, maybe it gets a little dried out, you know, maybe I have lunch or something like that. I feel like it's a really good lip balm to kind of rehydrate and reprep the lips and then you can go back in with your lipstick. If you have watched any of my previous Sephora sale recommendation videos, then you will know that I was a huge fan of the YSL Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks. Just a really beautiful, shiny, semi-pigmented, hydrating kind of oily lipstick. They were so, so good. I was very concerned, okay, because they just reformulated them and they just rebranded them to the Love Shine lipsticks. I don't feel like it was necessary, but they did, okay. I did pick one up in the shade Peachy Glow. I've been wearing it like almost every day in a lot of my videos for about a week or so now. I think that I still like them. I think that I still like them. I miss my old favorite shades, but I'm willing to try some new ones, okay? So I'm adding them here to my recommendations video. I think you should check them out, especially if you liked the older versions. The Peachy Glow, that one is a really nice kind of nude for every day. It doesn't look peachy. It's more of like a nude. I'll just let you guys know that. I also really like the Candy Glaze, okay? We still have those, thankfully, from YSL. Those are gonna be like ultra, like glazed donut type of lip. They're a little bit thicker. I really like those as well. There's a nude shade. I believe it's called nude pleasure. That one is really, really good. You honestly can't go wrong with a candy glaze. One of my recent lipstick obsessions, you guys will know if you saw my updated lip ranking video, are the new Merit Signature Lip Matte Lipsticks, okay? They had the satin ones and then they just came out with the matte version. And guys, I think I like them even more than the satin ones. And that's saying something because those are really good and those are in like every recommendation video as well. The matte lipsticks, are so good, okay? They are not your average matte lipstick. They don't dry out the lips. They are like soft, airy, creamy. They stay hydrating. You don't need a lip liner. They're so user-friendly. They're very much like something you can almost treat like a less pigmented lip balm, but it's a matte lipstick. And the colors are so, so gorgeous, guys. We got my mom the shade Sunday because she said she wanted like a spring pink. So I ordered that for her. We posted a photo of us wearing it and I got so many DMs, guys. What shade is that? What shade is that? What shade is that? It is such a beautiful shade. I really like the shade Antibes. That's the one that I've been wearing on the reg. These lipsticks are amazing, guys. And I told you in that video, I think that these Merit lipsticks are a really good half price dupe for the Prada soft matte lipsticks. I would include those in this video, but because the Merit ones are so similar, I would say get the Merit ones. And if you wanna try out a Prada lipstick, get the Hyper Matte formula because that one is really unique. That one is really good. If you're going for matte, I would go basically like one or both of those options. I am also obsessed, you guys know, with the Makeup by Mario Super Satin Lipsticks. If you don't want matte, if you want more of like a satin formula, a little bit of shine, a little bit creamier, get the Makeup by Mario ones. They are so 
good, guys. They're so good. They're probably some of the best lipsticks that I have ever tried. They really cling to the lips. Somehow they have amazing longevity. They stay hydrating on the lips. I absolutely love them. The shade range is really beautiful. I'm getting at least two, probably three of those in the Sephora sale for myself. And I highly recommend the shades Dumbo and Uptown Girl. Uptown Girl is such a cool coral for the summer, but very wearable. They're very, very good. And lastly, friends, this wouldn't be a Sephora sale recommendations video without me telling you how much I love the Dior Addict Lip Maximizers. This is what I'm wearing on my lips today with the Charlotte Tilbury pencil. I have the shade here, Rose Gold. This is one of the newer shades that came out, so it's probably one that many of you have not tried. It is a beautiful soft pink, like a peachy pink, with a gorgeous like golden shimmer, not glitter, but shimmer. It's so beautiful. I love the way it just kind of plumps and hydrates the lips. I don't feel like these sting that much. They do tingle. And the other shade, guys, that I highly recommend you check out is Shimmer Hazelnut. I think that one officially is my absolute favorite. I've talked about it before on this channel. It just makes you look like you have lip filler. Like it is crazy sparkly, but in the best way ever. And it's a really beautiful sheer brown. So it goes well with a lot of neutral eyeshadow looks and makeup looks. Next up, friends, we are getting into skincare, body care, and hair care. I'm kind of lumping them all together. I'm just letting you guys know my absolute favorites. There's not a lot of skincare actually that I buy from Sephora. I get a lot of skincare from like my dermatologist and the drugstore. I don't often splurge on my skincare, but let me tell you guys, I love my creme de la mer. That is like the one thing that I have to splurge on, I'm finishing up a jar right now. It's so thick and creamy and soothing for my dry skin. Do I think it is an absolute necessity? I've told you guys this before. I don't think it's a necessity, but if you're like me and you have like insatiably dry skin and like nothing will help it and nothing will calm it down, then I do highly recommend the Creme de la Mer. And actually friends, that is the only skincare product for the face at least that I'm gonna be recommending in this video because like I said, that's the one thing that I would buy. That's the one thing that I do buy. Something that's kind of adjacent, however, that I also commonly recommend in these videos is the Dr. Dennis Gross LED face mask. You guys have seen me wear this on my Instagram stories. I love to hang out, drink my coffee with my cat in the morning, check my emails wearing my LED face mask. Does it make a difference? I definitely think it does. I think it helps with a lot of my redness. It just kind of calms down my skin, evens out my skin tone. You do have to use it regularly. I probably wear it for about maybe like 10 to 15 minutes and I try and do it almost every single day. I've been using it for two years regularly. So I definitely can attest to the fact that, I mean, at least for me, I think it makes a difference. And this is a really good time to pick one up. I picked it up in the Sephora sale, I think, like I said, about two years ago at this point. While I don't have a lot of skincare recommendations, I do have two body care brands that I love from Sephora. The first one is L'Occitane. Everybody knows about this brand, okay? So maybe I don't need to tell you about it, but I love their creams and their oils. Full disclosure, they do send me quite a bit of their products, so I've tested a lot of them. And hands down, my favorite is the Milk Concentrate Body Cream. It is made with almond oil. It's so creamy and luxe and rich. I love it, and the packaging is very luxurious as well. I feel like this would make a really good Mother's Day present or just a really good gift in general. I also adore their shower oil. If you're like me, if you love that kind of almond oil scent, it's such a beautiful, luxurious experience in the shower. I love testing body products, by the way, so maybe that's why I have more recommendations for them. The other brand that I recommend you check out that you might not have heard of is called Hani or Hani. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that okay. This brand has some really like interesting and unique products. They have also sent me a couple of their things. I think you guys need to check out the Water Balm. It's basically like this, it's like a spray lotion almost. It's very, very lightweight. You spray it on your body after you get out of the shower while your skin is like still a little bit damp. You rub it in and it just gives you this instant but very lightweight hydration that lasts all day. And I love the scent of their products as well. So definitely check them out because I feel like, you know, everybody has like creams, everybody has like lotions and that kind of stuff, body splash, that's really big now. But this brand, I feel like in particular has some very like interesting, more unique products. A lot of you guys ask me, how do you get your eyelashes so long? And I wanna share a little secret with you guys. It's not just the mascaras that I just recommended, it is also 
the lash serum that I like to use. And it is the lash serum from Grande Lash. They sent this to me like two Christmases ago and I was finishing up my little tube of a new lash, which is what I used before. And I liked the new lash, okay? But then I started using the Grande Lash and I swear, I swear, my lashes are more Grande. I love this stuff. I repurchased it. I've been using it ever since. I just put a little bit along my upper lash line before I go to bed each night and it just makes my lashes grow so, so long and fluttery. Before we get into the fragrance category, friends, I do have a couple of hair product recommendations for you. The first one is from Sol de Janeiro, which I don't know why I don't really think of that brand when I think of hair care. I normally think of like the boom boom creams and the lotions and that kind of stuff. But I tried a jumbo sample of their milky leave-in conditioner last year. I think I got it as like a freebie, you know, from Sephora. This stuff is good. I'm gonna be getting this. I'm gonna be getting this in the sale. I've been waiting to kind of like use up some of my other things and I'm gonna get this product because it leaves your hair so soft, so soft and smelling so amazing, okay? I wouldn't say it's like as strong as the lotions, but you'll be going about your day and you'll just kind of like, you'll just kind of like get a little whiff and you'll be like, whoa, what smells so good? And then you realize it's me. I smell so good. My hair smells amazing from the Sol de Janeiro product. It's really, really nice, guys. I don't know, I just like catch a little whiff of my hair and I just feel, mm, I don't know, like fancy and feminine and flirty. It, it's such a good, good product. The other leave-in product that I really like is from Bumble and Bumble. I've been using this for years. It's the Invisible Oil Primer Spray. Not the Invisible Oil, the Primer Spray, okay? This is incredibly lightweight and smoothing if you have fine hair like me. I have very thin hair. It's very limp. Okay. I also, you know, use heat products on it as well. This is going to be really great if you want something lightweight to style your hair. It's a leave-in product. It's great at detangling and it also is like a heat protectant as well. And then lastly, friends, I also really like the Verb Hydrating Hair Treatment. This is another product that I'm going to be repurchasing in the sale. It is the main conditioner that I use. It is really, really good for detangling your hair. It also not only kind of leaves your hair soft, but it's kind of lightweight. Once again, my hair is very fine and limp, and it actually is one of the more affordable hair care products at Sephora, so I like that as well. Actually, before we get into the last category, I do just want to quickly say my thoughts on the Dyson Airwrap, because I feel like, you know, no matter how many times I share this, I always have new subscribers, and I always get questions about the Dyson Airwrap, because it is such a hot item during the sale. I have a Dyson Airwrap, guys. I think it is a nice product, but I honestly honestly never use it. I can link down below the curling iron that I usually use. It's from Ulta. It's pretty affordable. It's really nothing crazy. I always get questions like, oh, how do you wave your hair? How do you style your hair? I just use a curling iron, guys. I really don't use anything special. I use the products that I just mentioned to you. Those are some of my go-tos to kind of get my hair a little bit soft and shiny. But I don't use the Dyson Airwrap really ever because it just takes so long to style my hair. And then I really don't feel like the style or the volume lasts. So I'll pull it out and I'll use it if I have like a special event or something and I can really sit there and like pin the curls and let them cool for like an hour or two. But other than that, guys, it's just such a bulky product and I really need something that's really quick. I can do this in like 10 minutes. So I don't personally recommend the Dyson Airwrap, but I know a lot of people really, really like it. Those are just my thoughts. And the last category, if you are still with me, is fragrance. I made sure to include this this time because a lot of you guys are telling me you want more perfume recommendations on my channel. So here you go. These are my favorites specifically for the spring and summertime because I like to change up my fragrances seasonally. And my first recommendation that I have here is actually a set. This was in my gift guide this past holiday season and you guys were so excited about this one and it's still at Sephora, guys, okay? This is a Maison Margiela set. This is the Replica brand and the scent is Beach Walk, one of my favorite scents for the summertime. Beautiful kind of sensual white flower type of scent. I love it and this set comes with both the fragrance and also the candles. So really, really good value. And then on top of that, 
you can get it on sale. I feel like this would make a really great gift, maybe a gift to yourself, maybe a gift to your mom for Mother's Day, something like that. You guys also know I am a huge fan of the Tom Ford fragrances. I have quite a few in my collection at this point, and I have three for spring and summer that I wanna recommend as my favorites. The first one is actually my favorite overall. This is my favorite Tom Ford perfume. It is the Tom Ford Soleil Neige perfume. This is so lovely. I like to wear this all year round because it is a mix of beautiful, soft, sensual white flowers like jasmine and fresh citrus fruits, a little bit of like lime at the top. And it sounds like it's gonna be really weird, but it's so beautiful. Next time you are in Sephora or a department store, give that a sniff. Let me know what you think of it. I love the fact that it isn't like super deep and heavy, but it also isn't completely like fresh and citrus. It really is somewhere in the middle. It's such an interesting fragrance. I love it for every day and I really, really like to wear it kind of like in the evening in the summertime. You guys are going to see a trend in some of these fragrance recommendations. During the spring and summertime, I pretty much always want to feel like I'm in the Mediterranean, okay? You guys know I'm Greek American. I used to spend a lot of time in Greece with my grandparents growing up. So I love the smells of kind of the summertime, citrus, the seaside, you know, the trees. I I just love those scents. So it really brings back memories for me. And one of the fragrances from Tom Ford that kind of evokes those vibes for me is Neroli Portofino. Now the notes for this are Tunisian Neroli, Italian Bergamot, and Sicilian Lemon. I know it's Italian and it's not Greek, okay guys? But I love the smell of bergamots. I love that this is kind of like more fresh. This is what I wear during the daytime. Also because it has the Tunisian Neroli, it adds a little bit of like a sexy base note that balances out the citrus. I also really like, friends, the Tom Ford Costa Azura perfume. This is gonna be a little bit deeper. The notes for this are cypress oil, oak wood extract, and salty amber. Unlike the Neroli Portofino, which is very much more of like a spicy citrus scent, this one is gonna be more woody. It's gonna be like citrus and wood. So when you think of like cypress trees and like oak trees that grow, you know, along the mountains and stuff like that in Italy and the Mediterranean, you're getting a little bit more of that. I like to wear this more like when I go out in the summer. This is more of like an evening scent for me. And then the Neroli Portofino, that's more of like my daytime scent. Another really beautiful scent that evokes similar memories for me is the Jo Malone Fig and Lotus Flower. I always think of walking down to the beach in Greece and the sun is hitting the fig leaves of the trees that kind of line the pathway leading up to the beach. And the smell, that kind of like green smell is so intoxicating to me. And I love the incorporation of that fig leaf scent in this Eau de Parfum. It not only has the fig leaf, but it also has the scent of the juicy fig fruit in there as well. And it's not all fruity and all kind of green because it's mixed with the lotus flowers. So you have some white flowers flowers in there, and it also has vetiver as a base note. So I feel like it's really beautifully balanced. Sometimes with fig scents, it's like a little bit one way or another. And I think I think my mom has this one as well. We both really, really like it. It is a beautiful scent if you like something that's a little bit more kind of green, a little bit more of like a green note. And then on a very different note, not Mediterranean inspired at all, but still really fun, feminine, and flirty for spring is the Hermes Twilly fragrance. I always come back to this every single springtime. It is like a powdery floral fragrance. So if you don't like anything the slightest bit powdery, you might not like this, but I feel like they make it very balanced and interesting with the incorporation of tuberose and also they have here sandalwood. So there's a little bit of like a woody note and then they also have ginger in there for like a little bit of spice and intrigue. It's really hard to describe this fragrance, but I don't have anything like it in my collection. If you want something that is a little bit you know, more feminine, you don't really want to go like the citrus route or something very overtly woody or spicy, I would highly recommend this one. My voice is so tired, friends, and there's like no natural light left to film with, as you could probably tell, but I do have one last fragrance recommendation, and it is a men's cologne, okay? This is the one that I got for my boyfriend in the last Sephora sale. This is the Prada Luna Rosa Ocean Eau de Parfum for men. This stuff smells 
so good. My boyfriend loves the little fragrance sample, so you can try new things. And every time he put on this fragrance, it smelled so good, so good. Every time I'm like, oh, I gotta get you that fragrance. I gotta get you that fragrance. And he absolutely loves it. It is his new favorite. This has a base of incense and vanilla bean accord. So it has kind of like that depth that you normally see from a men's fragrance, but the top notes are grapefruit. So you get a little bit of like freshness in there as well. Sounds like a really weird combination, but trust me guys, it smells amazing. It smells so good. It is sophisticated, but it also smells kind of like a little fresh and sporty at the same time. It's not overpowering. It's not like cloying or anything like that. I know a lot of men's colognes can be a little bit too strong. Definitely check this out if you're a man or if you are a man and you're looking for a really nice smelling cologne. I love this one and he loves it too. And that is it. That is it, my friends. Believe it or not, we're done. Are you still with me? If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and make sure you leave me a comment down below, okay? I want to hear from you. What are you planning to get in the event? Are you going to be shopping this sale? Let me know. Are any of these products also your holy grails? Definitely let us know. Help everybody out because everybody is looking for the best new thing to add to their collection. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We would love to have you. Everything will be linked down below. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.